Hey everybody, what's up? This is Crypto Cody, and I'm so excited to do another video for you guys. Guys, if you could do me a huge favor, please like, subscribe, comment, hit that bell notification. That would mean the world to me. In addition to that, I'm super excited to share with you guys an interview that I recently did with a gentleman by the name of Shash, who is a co-founder of Altcoin Buzz and leads a team of over 30 people in multiple countries sharing news every single day about cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. So let's hop into the buzz, guys. Ash, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Really excited to have you on. Uh, just want to do a quick little introduction for you. And uh, so for those of you who don't know Shash, he is a crypto enthusiast, blockchain researcher, and uh, co-founder of the Altcoin Buzz team. Uh, you can check them out at altcoinbuzz.io. Uh, he's the chief operating officer of that organization where they have literally over 30 people that are a part of the team in multiple time zones around the world. So it's really exciting to see the news that's constantly coming out every day. And um, just, uh, you know, I want to just kind of start this off with a really interesting, um, fun question. I know that you're vegan and... Um, so I, I'm just curious, like, what are some of the, what, what's a meal? What's your favorite meal that you like to prepare? Listen, man, this is how my meals are prepared. I open the fridge, whatever is getting spoiled, I put it in a hot pot and I heat it. Like, <laughs> nice. Like that's, that's how I cook food. Like I, I look at everything and I put some like, uh, some spices and herbs in it and I'm done. Like my meals are, un, are completely inedible. What I make is survival food. Like that's <laughs> that's food. awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, well, dude, so tell me a little bit about your background, like, cause, um, you've been a, you, you've been a very successful entrepreneur and, um, obviously I want to get into the cryptocurrency talk, but how did you get started? Like, where did this all arise in you? To tell you the truth in 2012, 2013, my dad introduced me to cryptocurrency. Wow. That's awesome. And, and, uh, he's like, Hey, check this out. This digital currency stuff is happening. And one of his He's a lawyer and one of his clients was working on launching a digital currency and there was no concept of ICO back then. Right, right. And I'm like, dad, that's a scam. This whole Bitcoin stuff, it's, it's crap. Like you don't get into this. How, how do you expect a currency to work in this world? Like who's going to accept it? Makes no wow. sense. Dad. Like forget about it. <laughs> and then what happened in 2016, I was like, okay, I need to find an industry which has money and is young and is interesting. So I'm looking at AI and I'm looking at uh, VR and I'm looking at 3D yeah. printing yeah, yeah. and everything that's going on. So the, the crypto part of things seemed very interesting. And I read an article about the Bitcoin halving, which was going to happen. And yeah. I was like, okay, this needs to make more sense. And I started really looking deep into it and Eventually, I realized there is something to it. And during that time, the demonetization happened in India, where the prime minister came online and he's like, uh, uh, sorry, the money that you have is not usable anymore. Like yeah, your yeah. cash, it's useless. Now, tomorrow onwards, you, you need to figure out your ways. So that, that happening and then the whole problem of, you know, the government being able to print as much money as you want, the money being devalued on a regular basis. Like wow, the inflation yeah. in some of the countries that I have worked in is crazy, right? The money is getting more cheaper every day. So that means a man who's earning X dollars first year, in five years, if he's earning the same, he's getting poorer every year. You're literally wow. getting poorer. Yeah, yeah. So... So the way Bitcoin worked really fascinated me. But at that point of time, I had really no money. Like I had literally yeah. no money to invest or do anything. So yeah. I spent the whole of 2016 and till like the middle of 2017, just trying to understand the space, like just emailing people, talking to them, understanding what's going on. I had no idea about anything. Right? And by the end of 2017, like I think in the middle of 2017, I'm like, okay, I think there is so much happening in this space that starting a tech startup is very, it's an easy point of failure, yep. right? Doing trading isn't my thing at all because I literally had no money. So I'm like, maybe talking about cryptocurrencies and educating people would be a good thing. And that, yeah. I think education is the best way to learn things as well. Yeah, absolutely. And that's man. when I connected with Jeff, uh, who had just started a channel. It had like 500 or 600 subscribers at that yep. point of time and I'm like bro let's let's do this I love research I have all these ideas and stuff and Jeff was like yeah man let's do it so he immediately like we immediately clicked and he's like let's start uh doing this 
and uh, then we added more people to the team to make more content one of the guys from the community came and he's like i want to start a website somebody said i want to start a community part in the website yeah. somebody said i want to start a gaming segment somebody said i want to make more videos but i want to do ta and we just grew man like this was just a fun project that became big yeah. I mean, bigger than we'd really expected it to. Oh, seriously. And, you know, I can attest to like how awesome, because I will say this, I remember back in 2017, right when that bull run was getting ready to start, was when I first started watching your channel. I mean, you guys do so, so well. And I remember Jeff and uh, in his videos he put out, I just super, super cool. So, I mean, it's been fun to watch you guys grow um, to the massive channel that you guys are now. So really, really cool. And, um, you know, I want to kind of dip into, um, you were speak you were talking about the halving. So um, that's going to be coming up, we believe, in May. Is that correct? End of April, apparently. Around that time. Yeah, there's um, a, bit, a bit of a shift because of the blocks being hard faster. Now, the, here's, my, here's my question. is: So we've seen in the past that after the halving in previous years, um, it seems that there seems to be like a steady incline in the market. So do you think that we're in that steady incline right now? Do you think there's an actual bull run that we're in? Or do you think that's not for another year or so? I cannot say, man. What what I can say is the pri the pricing around halving and post halving is going to be significantly higher. That's yeah. that's all that my analysis says, and my analysis says that's because it's hard to price in halving till the event has happened. Like right, it's just right. hard to do it because the cost of production of Bitcoin remains cheaper. Like it is lesser than it will be post halving. Right. So right. the 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 factor that it will start becoming more expensive since that date, I feel the actual event is going to cause and start moving the prices back into the market, higher prices into the market. Like the whole whole uh, model that Plan B, uh, this, this person on Twitter has put across about halving and the scarcity model that, you know, the fact that even without demand, yeah, Bitcoin's price will go up. Like uh, the, the supply reducing and the current demand is itself powerful enough for Bitcoin to become very, very expensive. Yeah, And yeah, I mean, the fact that Bitcoin's steady at the price that it is, is both, it's, it's both uh, positive and questionable at the same time. Like we, we as researchers, like as, as people in the space who are investors and investigate, it right. is our job to figure out why is it at this price, right? Yeah, is exactly. It being manip is it being manipulated at 10,000 or is it like bullish at 10,000 and the, it's valued in just right? Right. So there are a lot of factors that we can consider why this is a good thing and why this could be a problem as well. Yeah. Now, as far as um, like you've started, you were talking about how you got pretty heavily invested in cryptocurrency. It was in early 2017 or was it before that a little bit? Yeah, I, I got, my time got invested, not financially. I, I never yeah. really could afford to buy a lot of cryptocurrencies in 2016, 2017. Now in your research though, what have you seen that as far as breakthroughs go since the beginning of Bitcoin up until now, like what do you think are some of the greatest breakthroughs that you've seen in the crypto sphere? I think a uh, few things that have happened which have made it easier for me to understand is uh, dividing the various types of blockchain projects that exist into yeah. different categories. Yeah. So the basic, the first layer of DeFi, which is pure payments, which is Bitcoin. Right? Yeah. That's a cryptocurrency in my opinion. So that is one form of uh, one form, one type of currency. So Bitcoin is decentralized and it it is your own bank. It's You can right, make payments right. with it, right? Uh, that is the purest form of DeFi. The second, uh, so within this segment, which is cryptocurrencies, you can have Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Monero, all the privacy coins, right, etc. Exactly. So, so they have a similar function with each other. So they can incentivize people by a staking model, they can incentivize people by proof of work and, and the various different models, master nodes, et cetera, right? Right, right. The, the, all those things exist. The second type would be the base layer protocols like Ethereum. So Ethereum revolutionized the space a lot because it allowed people to do more than just payments. Right, it, exactly. It, it got people into this realm of 
not just creating tokens but smart contracts which allowed you to play around and build tools which are necessary for finance so defi is going to be built on things like ethereum yeah. and ethereum is really huge right now in terms of the number of projects that are built on it yeah uh, there's about a billion dollars uh worth of defi i think on ethereum alone right now wow that's crazy and uh, that that's huge right and that that much is not even in lightning right lightning network the last i checked it was 8 8 million dollars million wow yeah huge difference so, huge <clears throat> difference right and and defi is getting hotter but defi is very experimental so the whole yeah. smart contract is like the smart contract protocols is like my second division which will also include coins like lisk neo uh now energy is doing it you yeah. have uh iost you have like so many of them we chain yeah uh, yeah so all these base layer protocols are sort of providing a similar tomo chain like that's another one that i really like and what they're doing in their ecosystem is very fascinating you don't have to invest in any of these but the point is you need to still understand what's happening in it to be able to see where the progress is happening what is comparable in terms of technology what is comparable right. in terms of use cases right exactly yeah please. well now there's also like with the smart contracts um you're saying that you know it's it's one exp- it's an experiment right now but where do you see the future of that growing into as far as smart contracts goes the use cases are endless literally like i i maker dow is one of the biggest uh defi platforms on ethereum right now Yeah and it's a very very simple use case like it's yeah. it's the simplest defi platform you can have besides payment and that allows you to take loans on your collateral yeah no that's brilliant but but here's the thing right these 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 projects these ideas are like 2 years old they're they're very it's very early to no they're very susceptible to issues like we do not know what kind of problems we will have with defi we do not know what kind of manipulation is possible right like recently there was a not really a hack right but there was somebody who was managed somebody managed to take bzx uh was this defi protocol where somebody yeah. managed to uh manipulate the system so that they could take out like 300000 dollars worth of ethereum from it and wow. it wouldn't be considered a hack because that person exposed a vulnerability within the 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 platform yeah yeah so you you can't say he stole it because you have a decentralized smart contract platform right somebody used it uh in the way that you were allowing them to use it wow and they exploited it and they took the money out so i think i think these these things are scary and interesting at the same time because this is 300000 dollars worth spent on making sure that this does not get repeated again right, and right. the code becomes better so over time defi tools will become more and more robust as well right right now uh, the, as as far as those hacks go um i mean obviously we've had some serious stuff go down this past year and and in in the past years too with uh different exchanges getting hacked into and some of these exchanges have been shut down and just crazy stuff's happened so like do you have any advice on like different exchanges that you think would be safer to be trading on um uh, let alone leaving your money on which obviously i don't think is necessarily the wisest thing in the world but like you know what are your thoughts on good exchanges to be investing in or maybe wallets or um just those different things Yeah this is this is like an opening a can of worms with yeah I'm sure yeah particular <laughs> uh the the thing is that the 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 hack that I was telling you about exposing the defi vulnerability right that yeah, yeah. those those issues are key to making defi better but most exchanges that are doing well are extremely centralized right now like right, there is right. no decentralization when it comes to exchanges Right. Uh, in fact in fact even with the most defi as of now it's not even decentralized yeah because after after this uh this error was exposed uh those guys were able to shut down their defi protocol H- how do you shut down something which is decentralized like saying i had my wallet stolen so i shut down bitcoin right exactly that, right? it's not yeah. it's yeah. it's centralized i mean it's how is that decentralized that's a very good point so 
so till these protocols become decentralized and they make more sense you know yeah uh, they they should not be completely decentralized any which ways right but coming back to your question about exchanges uh the exchanges that we have in the ecosystem aren't even ready for huge adoption right now no matter yeah. which one it is like i've used so many of them and even with blind binance like there are glitches there are yeah. there are these small errors that that it used to be really good but they've added so much onto it right now yeah exactly that it's really hard to have the best user experience they'll fix it like yeah. and everybody else wants to do good work like right. if a company is work so hard in building an ecosystem uh i believe and and we have to believe right like at the end of the day we have to do a 90% analysis and judgment call and 10% we have right. to leave it to faith like anything right. else right 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 uh but n- none of the exchanges that i have used so far have like really made life easier for people in general and if i would be able to sleep peacefully with my money on these exchanges not really man like yeah right for a while i would risk it trade if i need to buy something or sell something or whatever and then just take my money out that's also because that's also coming to my previous point that i was saying that you know the the excitement about being at 10000 with bitcoin is good and there is it's a problem at problem as well as to why there is a possibility that 10000 dollar bitcoin is a suppressed level right and 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 we did made, make a video about it last week where we're like there could be a possibility that some of the bigger exchanges uh be doing fractional reserve like the governments do that means maybe they're expecting some people with the accounts to disappear some people not withdrawing their bitcoin ever again etc right. so maybe huh. they're selling you bitcoin that they don't have do you think that there is a possibility and and it's i have no proof for this but Interesting. but the yeah. reason the point here is that why are we not at a 15000 bitcoin with the amount of hash rate we have with the amount of yeah institutional investment coming in when an institution wants to buy people within the company would want to buy in as well like yeah it's like institution is an organization but organization is made of individuals so if somebody studied it and these people are are rich people right 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 so if this whole if this whole and so much money has been put on loans 5 billion dollars is on centralized <laughs> finance on loans with three or four companies themselves right yeah. like with the uh, celsius network nexo uh crypto.com i think have launched it has a small amount right now yeah. i think binance is giving leverage uh, i mean you know you can take loans on right. it and and a bunch of other companies like 5 plus billion dollars worth of bitcoin which is out on which is locked in loans so it it you have to question what are the various ways uh what are the various reasons why bitcoin's not gone to its like high level as well so with those reasons themselves i would like people or i i at least myself take out my bitcoin from the exchanges so that you know i'm doing my job to not leave them on the exchanges. Right, right. Now, obviously, you know, there's a very up and coming um there's an up and coming exchange uh crypto.com and you've uh, yeah. you seem to have been pretty heavily are you you're heavily invested in the MCO token or the MCO and crypto.com as well or what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. So, I I've 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 been a card holder for MCO for yeah. since it was launched, right? Oh, that's uh, awesome. I've been following MCO and crypto.com since 2017. I ha- I did an interview with Chris I think end of 2017 or early 2018. Nice. And I was very impressed with what they were trying to do. Their exchange is a very new thing that they've launched uh, yeah. I think during block show uh, I think the last year. Yeah. And and that that has not much utility for mco the token they have a new token called cro and they right. intend to make that as their payment token and they intend to make it into the the whole payment ecosystem etc yeah. for yeah. It. so the utility for cro is way more on their exchange i've been testing their exchange i've been actually participating in the syndicate uh, very religiously which is their 
launch pad in a way. Right, right. And they're doing stuff like giving 50% on EOS, 50% on Stellar, 50% on, uh, what was the recent one? Uh, Cosmos, uh, wow. 25% discount on Bitcoin. Wow. And, yeah. and you, you don't get a lot of it, right? As, as a user, you get a very small percentage of it, but sure. it makes me want to lock my CRO and I also get 20% interest on my log CR. Right. And I mean, their, so, their incentive program is unbelievable for staking coins. It seems to be just awesome. And I, I guess it, it, you stake them for six months or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah. So if you stake them for six months, you get 10% interest because you, you get 20% annual interest. So in six months, you'll get 10. But if you stake it for a year, you get 20% interest. Right. Which honestly, I think that would be huge for the growth of just cryptocurrency in general. I'd imagine people having them stake, staking. I feel like staking has become such a thing um, since early 2019 up until here now, 2020. It just seems like everything's staking and baking and you know all these different uh, met- voting for some different yeah. super super representatives and whatnot. I mean, do you, it seems like that's pretty good for the crypto ecosystem as far as its growth, right? Incentivization, I think is fine. I'm not a big fan of staking or master nodes or baking yeah. or whatever. Like the 20% interest that crypto.com is giving is interesting because I like to participate in their syndicate activities. Right, right. Uh, Getting that twenty percent is it's fine. It's not. I'm not looking for twenty percent a year. Like and and also on right. a cryptocurrency is not not a goal for me. The reason they have to do it is because uh, crypto.com had launched their CRO token. Yeah. And anybody who held MCO was to receive this CRO token for the next five years. Right. Yeah. But what happened with the regulations in US? And this happened initially with Celsius Network as well. Uh, sorry, if this happened initially with Celsius Network as well. Yeah. Uh, is you cannot give interest or dividend right. on one asset in the form of another asset. Interesting. Huh. So for that reason alone, and that the fact that they wanted to launch in the US, they had to stop that five year plan right. and figure out new ways of distributing this coin that they had created. Wow. So that's why in the app you can stake CRO and get 18%. On the exchange, you can stake CRO and get 20%. Right, right. Uh, they incentivize you quite a bit with CRO as well. And uh, it's it's really good. Like this, the use case for staking CRO within their platform is very, very good. But yeah. I, th- there's just a bit of background on it there. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. And um, so, okay, so coming back to Bitcoin then, um, you know, I recently uh, did an interview with John McAfee and it sounds like he's kind of not so bullish on Bitcoin anymore. He seems to be, so like he says, basically the idea of Bitcoin has just become so clunky. You can obviously see where transactions are going and whatnot. And he seems to be more invested into privacy coins now, um, or he finds those to be more uh, better, like in a sense, the use case is better than Bitcoin. He kind of downplayed it a little bit. So I guess I can you kind of respond to that a little bit because I want to hear your thoughts on that. I, I I don't think I'm. It's John McAfee. Anything he does is way above my pay grade, man. Like I can't <laughs> contradict him. Like <laughs> I can't go around saying like like no, he didn't no, talk no, it Mac- bad. Like he wasn't saying yeah. Bitcoin's yeah. bad, but he just seemed to be more bullish into the altcoins than it appeared. Especially he spoke more specifically on privacy coins. So I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting because I know how bullish he was in the past on Bitcoin. You know, talking yeah. about how it was going to be pushing like a million dollars in 2020 and whatnot. But all right, I I can share my thoughts on. Bitcoin and privacy coins and other coins as well. The, the thing is that Bitcoin is easily the most distributed yeah. coin, the most decentralized coin out there. It has the strongest network out there. Right. Everything else, in a way, depends on Bitcoin. Like there is no altcoin market without Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. So exactly. if, if, Bit, if some like worst case scenario, Bitcoin is to go down. It's done. Like for altcoins to really come back and make sense for everyone to get back the trust in digital currencies, it's not going to happen. But altcoins right. go down almost every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, the, so also the other thing is that most of the altcoins, Ethereum, and the other even smart contract platforms, the development team have a very uh, progressive way of development. Whereas yeah. the Bitcoin core and the Bitcoin team have a very conservative way of development as well. 
Right. Yeah. And that's exactly. why Bitcoin is slow. That's why Bitcoin takes time. Those guys take their own, like they 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 do stuff in a very very like easy way. Like right. they're in no hurry to do anything, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Of course. I mean, they literally treat editing the code of Bitcoin, which will of course be, you know, not that easy to do in the first place. But they treat it like it's changing the engine of a seven four seven mid flight with people on it. Right, you right, know, it's, right. It's, and and without Bitcoin being where it is, without Bitcoin being decentralized, distributed, altcoins will not have that much values because altcoins mostly constitute of micro economies. Yeah. Like yeah. in the long term, I think privacy coins will do just fine. And with privacy coins also, there are many issues, right? Like the technologies eventually initially everybody thought Bitcoin was a privacy coin. Like that's why they used it in all sorts of sure, activity. Yeah. But then they realized Bitcoin is not private at all. And there are information coming out that many of the privacy coins aren't really private as well. So sure. the ones yeah, yeah. that are, uh, and there are a few that we've been researching on who are really, really good. Yeah, I think might might stand out and have some value in the long term. The But you think overall Bitcoin is going to continue to be the measuring stick for these cryptocurrencies, essentially? Like, you know, as far as the value goes, like the commo- the digital commodity of cryptocurrency. Investing in Bitcoin is investing in gold. And uh, yeah, exactly. investing in Ethereum is like investing in Amazon, the company. So one yeah. is like a technology play with like various stores and stuff on it. The other one's a digital asset, heavy to move around and stuff. Yeah, no, so that's, a, it's, yeah. That's so a beautiful it's, it's way to say it. Right? No, that's a beautiful way to say it. I love that. Amazon is like the Ethereum platform. I'm, I'm going to yeah. have to quote you on that. That's pretty cool. You, you um, can build stores on it and stuff. You can make your own coins on Ethereum like that. So it's it's hard to kind of measure the differences between the two. But Bitcoin's like it's key, man. Like it's key to our ecosystem. So people saying Bitcoin is bad or this one's good, it makes no sense. Like saying one is better than the other. One has more value than the others. Yes. Like if, if you ask me post having, I would convert about 80% or at least 60% of my portfolio into Bitcoin. Yeah. Uh, because I think that is very important. And before halving, I'm playing altcoins a bit. I think altcoins will be very bullish in the next two months till halving happens. Sure. So, and I'm not much of a trader, man. Like I have a few coins that I really like, uh, which includes MCO. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and I... I think they have value, but they're not going to compete with Bitcoin. They can give me yeah. more gains than Bitcoin because, uh, because you know, they're just undervalued to a certain extent. Yeah. But they, they're not going to be a thing that like Bitcoin I hold, I feel safe. Right. Anything right. else, you have to be very concerned because everything else are micro economies. They are small companies right. or startups that are not even two to three years old. Wow. Yeah. Like Binance is not even three years old. I know that's you know so that, crazy right? to think about. Yeah it's, yeah, it's just been around for such a short amount of time. And um, that's, that's crazy. Um, now there's a tweet that I was reading earlier that you, that you put out recently. Um, I'll just read it back to you really quick. So you were saying in five years, uh, Bitcoin will be easier to buy. It'll be easier to keep safe. Um, it will have a much stronger network, uh, be easier, faster, cheaper to transfer, much more regulated, be widely used and accepted. Uh, be more rare, uh, be more expensive of uh, to produce and have more stable price. So like, can you kind of expand on that tweet a little bit? I mean, obviously there's a lot said there, but like, um, <laughs> I'm curious to like, yeah. you know, you're saying within the next five years, um, cause I mean, that's, you know, just pick a few of those different things that you were talking about. I would, I'd like to kind of hear you expand on that a little bit if you could. Yeah. If, if you start picking up on my tweets on crypto Twitter, th- this will get really embarrassing for me. Right. <laughs> but what, <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, I love that your tweet tweets, is, dude, your tweets are inspiring every time I, 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 I follow you quite often on them. So really? Wow. Yes, I think, uh, uh, I, I just like just say stuff for fun. I just want to like get likes. Man. Well, no, it's good. Like, okay. So how about this then? How about this then? Like yeah. you were saying in the next five years, obviously I think that everyone would agree with you that Bitcoin's going to advance in uh, bettering itself. Um, but where do you see cryptocurrency in the next 10 years? Like, where, what do you see the crypto world like? And I know that that's, you know, it could be anything. But like, I don't know. Like, like I want to climb into your mind as far as 
what you see the future of cryptocurrency looking like? I think Bitcoin will be fine. I think the other ones would be a leap of faith in a way. Yeah. Uh, because companies come, they become big, they survive, they become massive, they die. Like we've seen that cycle over and over again. But sure. Bitcoin sort of stands out from all of them. Where do I see? Man, 10 years. Wow. Like I know, it's crazy I, to think about. <laughs> I can't say it. Like the five years that I'm talking about, all I'm saying is that Bitcoin will be, you know, way more advanced with everything else and way more expensive. So yeah. people who don't understand it now, who have a hard time buying it, storing it, understanding how a wallet works, can buy it at that point. Like that's sure. what I'm essentially trying to say. Like yeah. There's no point for you to buy it now if you're going to be like not taking a little bit of an effort to understand an asset that right. is revolutionary. And it's fine. Like I've, I've, I don't go around. So if somebody is not interested in talking about Bitcoin, I never talk about it. But yeah. to me, when people are like, man, what is this Bitcoin? I don't understand it. Then that's when I spend a lot of time explaining to them and till they understand where the value is or where it is not. And I want to understand from everyone's perspective why there is no value in Bitcoin. Because right, right. A, contrarian, a contrarian perspective always helps you with better analysis. Yes, of course. Yeah. And um, but now you talked a little bit about um, micro communities or uh, micro economies. economies. Yeah. yeah. So what do you, like? Can you kind of like what does that mean? You know, to you, micro economies. So I give you a few examples. So let's take Binance for that example. Yeah. Right. Binance has a coin called BNB. Yeah. And BNB can be used in their ecosystem to pay less fees. Yeah. When you trade in, if you decide to pay that fees in BNB. Yeah. That's the primary use case of BNB. There are yeah. multiple other use cases for BNB. You can trade against it. You can do, there are multiple use cases for sure. it. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But the primary use case is that people initially bought Binance coin to get discount on, on Binance. Coin. Yeah. On Binance. So it is a company. It's a centralized organization. Right. That has released a coin which allows people with a limited supply. So the coin has the same same qualities as Bitcoin is known to have. Limited sure. quantity. Uh, you know, you can track it where it is on the blockchain. You can see what's going on with it, etc. Now, they've created this micro economy where their coin is used within their ecosystem, which is Binance.com and now many other websites. Wow. But yeah. No, nobody's going to use that Binance coin to, to really buy coffee with. Like I would right, rather right. spend Bitcoin to buy coffee with because I don't expect the coffee company to ex accept Binance. Like they're trying to do all that stuff, but it's kind of unnecessary. They have a very strong micro economy right. and the coin is doing just fine. Everything else, in addition, it's, it's an add-on. You can, right. like, in a bunch of sites, you can, like Travala.com, you can buy uh tickets with it and many other companies have included Binance as a method of payment as well, BNB. Sure. But that's all additional. The micro economy is still Binance.com. If Binance.com goes down, that economy is dead. Like right, there is no, right. yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I say go down, etc. But these are just like my extreme examples. When you understand extreme examples. Yeah, no, of course. To, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you think that companies are going to just start creating stable coins for their, for their companies to be able to specifically use for their company? So co companies don't really need to create stable coins, right? Like if there is a stable coin in the market and they want to accept it for payments, they can do it. So that's, that's easy. Right, right. They, they, will be, they will be stable coins that people start believing in more. The problem is our first stable coin was USDT, right? There right, was no right. stable coin before that. And the history, if you look at what happened with Bitfinex when they launched USDT, it's crazy, right? Like first time USDT was launched, it was to pay for... Uh, the hack that happened on their platform and the, the moment they gave it to people, the price went to 30 cents or something like that. Right. Yeah. So the USDT, the history is like, and Bitfinex itself doesn't have a clean history, right? Right. Of what I've read. Uh, so we will have, we have very interesting stable coins like Coinbase and I think Coinbase with... Which company did they release? USDC, right? Yeah, so Coinbase yeah. with another company. I think Compound. No, not Compound. 
I, I forgot. Yeah, but yeah. Coinbase has released USDC, right? So people should be using it more, but still USDT is used more. Uh, Maker has MakerDAO, the decentralized, uh, the DeFi lending platform that I was talking yep. about on Ethereum, has a stable coin called DAI. Right. right? And that is also really, really cool as well. I, yeah. And there are a couple of exchanges building pairs against DAI. I think DAI should be used as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, you have PAX, PAX source, which is also quite regulated. You have USD, true USD, TUSD as right, well. Right, right. Uh, and they are there. So the point is that stable coins is a business. Right. So a company wanting to launch a stable coin is not a very... Uh, it's not really possible, right? Like it, uh, you can't get into the business of launching stable coins, but right. you can launch a limited supply reward system to incentivize your users and tell them here are airline miles, but these airline miles are limited quantity. Yeah, so, exactly. So the value, the amount of airlines you can take with it is uh, more like with less coins, you can buy more airline miles right. or use more airlines. But the point is why why the airline mile system works just fine. Nobody is going around asking for decentralization. Nobody is saying give us a coin that we can trust. You give them a coin, you give them a discount on it with the amount that they use. People use it. Like not many people complain about this stuff. Yeah. So is this a problem worth solving? In some cases, yes. But in right. most cases, it's just forced. And businesses that force a coin into their ecosystem are not, for me, not investable. Um, now, as far as the future goes, I mean, this is kind of more of a fun question. Um, if you feel, if you feel like answering it, um, what are some of your, like, give me like your, maybe your top five projects that you are really excited about as far as the upcoming year. Okay. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of engine. I think yep. engine is one of the most, most like one of the closest projects to being perfect that I could find. And of course, man, there are flaws in it. There are issues. With it. There's stuff that needs to be worked. Right, but right, I right. think Engine is, is really close to being uh, one of the most, like for me, like for the way I like to invest in stuff, the way I like to like look at projects. It's a B2C project with a very good token utility uh, with developers and users wanting to use it uh, with excellent partnerships, partnerships that need to buy their coin no matter the quantity, but they need to buy the coin to be able to build NFTs with it. Yeah. So Microsoft items are actually backed by engine. So they technically, I don't know if they bought it or not, but their items are backed by an engine coin, which right, I, right. I think is a beautiful use case. Binance released NFTs and they were backed by engine coin. Right. Right. And Binance have their own chain. They, they didn't use... And Binance is invested in Cocos BCX. They're invested in a bunch of uh, like Launchpad, right? Yeah. But none of the technology really works. The engine technology works. And the fact that everyone is using it is a testament right. uh, to yeah. their technology and their use case being solid. At the same time, the interface and the wallet that they've made is excellent. Uh, for me, the big problem with, with engine is the fact that uh, it's it's not really scalable at the moment. So sure. engine's most biggest use case is for games, but engines built on Ethereum and Ethereum is very slow at this moment and very expensive. So if you want to transfer game items on Ethereum, it really is very expensive if you want to do it. And I've right, made right. NFTs myself on engine. I've been like, we've been doing, we made our first NFT on engine in November, I think 2018. Okay. Yeah. And we, we haven't stopped making them since then. Like the, wow. the engine mainnet came out and now you can mint your own. So earlier we had to like tell engine to make NFTs for us. And now you can go to their website and make it yourself. So we've wow. taken our subscription. We're making a full guide about how you can make your NFTs and everybody should make NFTs. That's awesome. Like it's, it's fun. So that's one. The other project that I like is, of course, MCO. I think we've yeah. we've gone through that quite yeah, a bit. Absolutely. The yeah, use yeah. case is very simple. You hold your token and you can pay for stuff. Right. And you can use Visa. You, you can pay for stuff using Bitcoin. Right, right. Uh, 
it just makes my life easier man i i pretty <laughs> much like to invest in stuff that i understand the use case of i personally yeah. want to use and i'm i i see my friends wanting to use it as well like right. that's that's easy investment right? that's awesome so yeah. mco is fairly easy uh i'm i have cro now staked so okay. mco cro yep. both i have i think i have more mco than cro but i think that that might change yeah because of the amount of use case they have built for cro my big problem with cro is that the supply needs to be more distributed but okay. i think by the time it's more distributed it will have more value as well so i need to kind of maybe uh see my investment with mco cro yeah uh i'm a huge fan of chilies now i actually met alex alex their founder in uh, during binance conference in 2018 yeah yeah and he was just starting off and they were trying to do stuff and i was like wow man like we've heard these stories before like nobody's executed it like the reward system the team tokens this and that so many people have tried to do it right and i'm 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 a skeptical for like for the longest time right like i was introduced to engine in 2018 on the end of 2017 by box mining and he's like check it out it's amazing it took me one year to buy it or understand it like i i, <laughs> I it takes me a long time to really get into stuff right i don't form into anything at all yeah you uh, yeah so chilies took me and then when they launched the socios app i met alex again at uh block show and he showed me how it's working he he caught like one of the tokens on his uh ar system and then he told me that they've signed up you ventures and they've signed up all these big teams and i'm like all right then this has become super exciting for me and i started looking for dips to buy chilies since then and wow. yeah and now now they're signing up some of the biggest teams uh in the world man like it's super exciting chilies has been really interesting for me uh i like binance coin i think yeah. nobody has built a bigger community than them or user base like if you ask me one project that has got adoption in crypto yeah it's binance like there is nobody yeah. else who has adoption you know everybody is looking for adoption these guys i don't know how many 50 million users they have uh they have built everything like binance has built everything they have their own chain they have their own decentralized exchange decentralized or not but still they have built it right uh, right they have uh uh they're getting local coins local countries to have coins on their platform they they they're going into african countries where the growth of bitcoin is fastest like i think the number of people getting into crypto is the highest the percentage is highest in nigeria at this moment wow and they launched the nigerian stablecoin like they're they're working very very smart like what they're doing is very smart i'm not a salesman for any of these companies right like at the right. end of the day we have to analyze who's doing the work where is the value is there a risk to it there is always a risk to it. of course right? right uh the other coin that i'm buying now which is very hard to buy because of low liquidity is uptrend uh uptrend is the social media platform yeah. uh where we have been posting since the last 5 months 4 months at least and uh, it is it's it's been a really good interesting adventure to be on it and seeing the community and people come in for them to be excited about the platform even if you go onto their telegram chat nobody's really talking up trend price because up trends like their market cap is like 300000 dollars like right. it's possibly the worst market cap coin to ever <laughs> invest in uh their daily volume is like 30000 40000 dollars like literally it's it's like really there but their community never talks about listings like i tweet about dude why don't you try and get this listed nobody is interested in the price anything they love using the coin it's like it's like you know airline miles done yeah, yeah. right yeah. is people not bothering how much is the value of the airline miles they're like okay right. i get a discount i can buy some and people buy uh, earn these tokens they sell it like somebody wrote a beautiful story about how he sold a few Uh, of these uptrend tokens to buy a laptop and now he can use this laptop to write more content for uptrend and th- this touches me quite a bit like yeah. so uh, stuff like this is interesting and i use uptrend again uh 
chilies I've been using as well. Like I forgot to mention that one. I've been like uh, playing with their AR platform quite a bit, and yeah. I'm, I might be interested in trading the uh, teams as well. So that's that. Uh, what else do I like? I like Tomo Chain as a protocol. Um, I think what they have built is Ethereum 2.0. Like literally, yeah. what they've done is the only <clears throat> issue is that they're not. Their, their entire system is governed by 75 master nodes. Yeah, right? they achieved it before Ethereum, yeah. right? Yeah, but the thing is that they are uh, Ethereum virtual machines. That means their code is very similar to Ethereum. They've, they've yeah, taken yeah. Ethereum and then cleaned up the code and made it, you know, different. Right. And I, I'm a big fan of proof of work so far. Like people say it takes more energy. I have... I can go on for an hour about why proof of work is better than anything else right? Uh, at the moment. Uh, but the point is that they, but the, what Tomo Chain has done, what I like about it is uh, they have built easy to use systems that people are trying to build on Ethereum. So right. they're, not, yeah. they're not inbuilt on Ethereum. People have to build it. And here the team itself has built privacy. They're building privacy on it. They built a way they have built a beautiful way that if you transfer tokens from tokens built on Tomo chain from yeah. one wallet to the other, you can pay for those tokens, the fees in those tokens as well. Now wow. here's a problem with Ethereum, right? Let's assume you buy the engine coin. Yeah. Right. And I have to send it to you uh, on your wallet. I have to send you some engine. Sure. But I have to pay the fees in Ethereum. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like going to a restaurant and ordering a f- meal and your bill is like $100. And they're like, uh, sir, but you have to pay the fees in, uh, you know, Vietnamese dong. And you're like, I don't have Vietnamese dong, man. Just take my dollars, dude. Why can't you take my dollars? Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, no, no. Wow. You have to go two malls down. You have to go to this uh, money exchange called Coinbase, get some Vietnamese dong or Ethereum and come back and then right, pay. right, I'm right, like, dude. And this is a problem, right? Like I transferred, I, we made some NFTs on Engine. I transferred it. I sent it to my mom, and she's like, "Wow, these are cool. I want to send some to my friends." I'm like, "Mom, you can't send it. You have no Ethereum. And I'm not sending Ethereum to you. I did send wow. it. Wow, wow. Okay. But but what Tomo Chain has done? So so these are small things that are are being fixed by companies. Yeah, but. And they, they are decentralized to an extent that uh, they have a very interesting masternode system. That means the people who have low votes yeah. on their masternode, because the whole system works with people get votes and votes allow you to uh, be a masternode and masternodes get paid fees. Right, right, right. But in their system, a person with lower votes, but within the masternode, uh, I think 150 masternodes, yeah, uh, has gets more money than the guy on top. So if, if you're the most popular masternode, you get the least amount of money. But right. if you are the smallest one, so the whole gamification, right? Like people want to be like somewhere down the line, but they want to be there. So the, right. the, the fact that people keep coming into the system and they're getting out, it's it's fascinating in my opinion. Like wow. the, the system that they build, if you look into it from an intricate perspective, a lot of companies have done a lot of good work. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, dude, I really appreciate you sharing that all with us. And um, I guess um, I kind of want to, I have one last question for you. I want you kind of to expand a little bit on uh, the the new blockchain game review. Um, if you don't mind giving us a little bit of a sneak peek into the yeah. uh, the website that you're going to be creating for, for this massive, massive, it's a big blockchain gaming review site. So what's this all about? It's, it's, uh, so here's the thing, man. I, I'm not, I don't ever hide anything. Like the reason I have a company to put out news and information is to share as much as I can. The only thing is that the website is not ready and it has bugs. So I'm yeah. not going to give you the name of it. And I think everybody should build stuff in this space. You don't yeah. have to fundraise with the cryptocurrency. Like I think ICOs and IEOs are not not the right thing to do in this space, but there is so much to be done. There is sure. space for accountants, designers, game reviewers, game developers. Everybody has so much to do in this space. Like it's like the internet, right? Yeah, and yeah. that started, everybody could get in and do something. It's only the people who got in and did stuff. So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to launch sort of a IGN, 
or a IMDB for blockchain games. Yep. Because there are blockchain games being built on Ethereum, uh, Tron, Steam, uh, Matic. Decentraland is now moving to Matic. And there is so much stuff happening yeah. with all these blockchains. Neo has games. Uh, so many, so many of them. Oh, and yeah. There is, I couldn't find a simple, easy to understand database, which gives me information of these games and their NFTs. And I wanted wow. to invest. Like I wanted to buy into NFTs. Listen, my entire business, whatever I build, is to solve my own problems. Like I have an itch. Like I don't understand what's happening in crypto. So I built altcoin bars. My <laughs> itch is now that I need to understand ex- like investing in blockchain gaming. So, so I'm building this new website. So the problem is that I, I, it's not all for the money. It's about solving my own problems and people like it, right? Yeah, like you yeah, want yeah. news every day. So you yeah. solve the problem of getting news every day. And if you can't find a good source, you put it out. So we, even with Altcoin Buzz, right? What is our goal? It's simple. We want to be the kim- kindergarten for blockchain news. We don't want to be a PhD. We don't want to talk technology or deep technology. We don't yeah. want to talk deep business. We don't want to talk deep finance. But if you want overview of the news, easy to understand snippets, right? we are the channel to do that. And we'll survive like that. That is the crux. We're I, never going to yeah. get into very serious stuff. We'll be always the buzz, right? Yes, yes. And I love that about you guys. And honestly, uh, uh, Shash, I, I really do believe that you guys, I know that you said earlier in this uh, interview that you you guys are not the largest uh, crypto news channel out there in the world, but I truly believe, um, I predict that you guys will become the largest uh, crypto and blockchain news channel in the entire world because just it is the funnest channel to be a part of. And I just want to let all of our viewers know um, that we're going to be leaving all the descriptions below for um, the Altcoin Buzz channels. Um, I also want to leave a couple of different tipping. Um, if you could just send me a couple of addresses, uh, public addresses, I'll have the, our, my users tip you guys just to continue to yeah. produce um, just everything you guys are producing. I think it's wonderful. So um, I really appreciate you coming on and just sharing all of your awesome wisdom and knowledge. Uh, you're a brilliant, brilliant guy. So thank you so much for doing this for us. Thanks, man. Uh, the, the last thing is we've never, ever taken a single dollar from our audience ever. Like we've never taken tips. We've never taken donations, nothing. I think I always think even for the last years, every time we create content, I think we're not ready to charge for anything really. Sure. So uh, also like we set up as a registered company in Singapore, uh, 2018, right? Yeah. And since then we are bound by a couple of regulations. So earlier when we started the channel, 2017 and 2018 beginning, we could say whatever we wanted, man. Like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We, we, we would, and we didn't expect to have an audience, which is that, right? Like yeah. we would just make out videos, like saying Verge is going to like $15 and freaking Ripple is going to go to like $500 and stuff like that. Because we're like, we're just doing it for fun, right? And in the beginning, we learned a lot from our mistakes. And since we registered as a company, since we started focusing more towards doing things the right way, and we realized that, you know, we have to be more responsible in the information yeah. we provide. Uh, we do provide very boring content though. Like, like our, our channel, I feel gets a little boring and I wish sometimes that we should be bored. Like, I think this coin is going to go to five, six dollars. Dude, I, I, I can't say I've ever been bored. I don't think I've ever, not a single time. And I've been following you guys since the beginning. So, I mean, I, don't, I really yeah. don't believe I've ever been bored. You're, you're really nice, man. You're, no, you're I'm, like I'm honest. I'm honest. My heart is honest. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a BSer. All right. I, I will speak yeah. the truth from my heart and I truly believe it. And um, no, and, and I just, and again, I encourage everybody to follow you guys and your channel and all the great, great people, man. I, I wish I could name off all the names of the people that are doing <laughs> reviews and stuff on Altcoin Buzz, but dude, unbelievable yeah. guys so kudos to all them and keep producing amazing stuff for us please and uh and actually i want to say one last thing um you know just a kudos to you guys for continuing to produce through the bear market unbelievable yeah. man absolutely so <laughs> many channels went down during the bear market yeah. just because the enthusiasm was just lost but you guys pulled through so kudos to you on that and i and i really really i know that all of us appreciate you guys doing that so thank you so much for all that Thanks, man. That was that was hard though. Like surviving the bear market. I you know, I can't take loans anymore. Like to really run the company right now, 
it's just yeah. like I've run out of money. <laughs> no, nah, but we'll be fine. We, that's why we need to put those. That's here. why we need to put those tipping addresses down here for you guys, and throw no, throw like it, a company party for everybody. You know, whatever. Uh, so, thanks, man. I awesome, appreciate man. It. Yeah. Well, dude, I look. Yeah. I hope that we can do this again. And uh, thanks so much again for coming on, man. Thank you so much.